What I'm going to talk about now is data and research that the U.S. Department of Ed needs to do to determine the impact of the overall initiatives, so sort of looking across all the districts. So I'm a little bit different, but again, I'm hoping that you're going to stay with me. Um, one feature of what I'm about to say is that uh, in order to do an evaluation for the Department of Education, we're going to need you to roll out your FAFSA completion initiative in a particularly careful and deliberative way. And it's going to be different than what the early pilot sites do. And a lot of the discussion here was sort of emulating the early pilot sites, but fortunately or unfortunately, all of those of you who are in the expansion group that have multiple high schools, you are part of this big national evaluation. Yay! Come on, with me. Yay! Yay! All right, all right. But it does mean that it will be a little bit different. So why are we doing an evaluation? Why, why would we undertake this? And why would we ask you to do some things that are going to be a little bit more challenging? Well, first of all, every time that you download data through the portal and you get the data back, the person on the other side of it, let's see, is Charlie still here? No. It's not necessarily Charlie, right? But someone from a contractor that the Department of Education has engaged is matching each one of the student names that you send through the portal to the FAFSA database, downloading the status codes and the error codes, and putting it back through. And that whole process is actually pretty time consuming. It's basically on-demand data for you all as districts. And in the background, it's one of our contractors. And that costs the department money. And so when Greg went to the secretary and said, let's do this for all 24,000 24, school, high schools in the country, someone, I think it was our deputy secretary, said, what's the evidence that this works? Because this is a lot of money that we're going to have to put out, and we should spend a little bit of time trying to figure out if it's effective. So first, we, the department, needs to know if it's effective. But then you all, you're on the front lines. And people this morning talked a lot about having the data and being able to go to your chamber, being able to go to your mayor, being able to go to your social service agencies and say, look, this is what we can do. And so it's very, very important to have some data, some research to show what the impact of the initiative is going to be. And as I'm going to talk in a minute, the work that I'm going to do on behalf of the department, I'm going to try to find a way to turn much of it back over to you all. OK, so what questions are we going to try to answer with this big evaluation? We're going to answer questions about impact. OK, what's the impact on FAFSA completion? What's the impact on the offer of financial aid and receipt? And what's the impact on college enrollment? And I'm going to do this for all of the districts in the evaluation, which are, again, all of the districts that have multiple high schools. Now, to get impacts, OK, impacts are a little bit different than what Kelly was talking about this morning, which is setting milestones, tracking progress. What I'm going to be doing is answering the question about what would have happened in the absence of this initiative. And to do that, I need to know, since I can't measure your schools both with and without the FAFSA completion if you roll it out everywhere, we have a strategy for rolling it out in a kind of incremental way. So I can measure the difference between schools that are really moving forward on FAFSA and those that are not. And I'm going to talk about that in a minute. OK, so what's in it for all of you? I mean, I've talked about how important it is to the department. And I have to say that I can't remember who it was this morning, Haley or Thomas. Someone talked about how you all are the pioneers. And what happens here could determine whether districts across the country are going to have access to this individual data. And that's why it's really important at the department. But it should be important to you, too, because you're sort of on the vanguard. So. What we are going to do is, even though we're going to do this sort of complicated statistical work behind the scenes, we're going to provide to you an, an estimate of the impact in your own district. And it's going to look a little bit different than your tracking information, but I'll talk about it in a minute. It's going to be a real estimate of impact. And as I said earlier, if it's positive, it will very much help to make the case for you to get more resource, to get more attention to your broader college access initiative. And as I said earlier, 
If the results are positive, it will help the department make the case for why our resources should be spent making the data available more broadly. All right, so how will the evaluation work? I think a lot of you already know about this because we put it explicitly in the letter inviting districts to participate. I know I, I was in a webinar, I was part of a webinar in August, but it was important for me to come here again because I don't think it's how districts naturally think about rolling out initiatives. We heard a little bit this morning, uh, I guess it was in Washington, that you started in one school, right, and then you rolled it out. And so sometimes it does happen that way. And I think in some ways that's a thoughtful way to do it, to concentrate your resources perhaps in a smaller number of schools, work out the kinks, and then move it into the rest of the district. Here, that is an, a fundamental feature of the evaluation design and kind of what you signed on for, for better or worse. So what's gonna happen is that at least this first year in 2013, you're, we are going to be randomly, assi randomly assigning the high schools in your districts. And it's not that some are gonna be able to get access to FAFSA completion and some are not, but some are gonna get it in 2013 and some the following year. And, and we're gonna determine that randomly. So it's not that the schools that are most able to start will start first, it's gonna be a random selection. So that when we look at the outcomes in those schools and compare them to the outcomes in the schools that were randomly selected to be delayed for a year, we know that that difference is the impact and it's not something about the characteristics of the schools. So keep that in mind. This very first year, you're only going to be implementing in half of your schools. January 2013, the half that's randomly assigned to start right away can begin getting the individual student level data, and then the other group will start in 2014. And then as part of the evaluation I'm doing, I'll have access to all the FSA records, and I'll be able to do the match to get college enrollment information. Okay, so what do we need from you all? What we're gonna need from you is the list of all the schools that you want to eventually have access to the individual student level FAFSA completion data. So that could be all the high schools in your districts, or perhaps you have some that are specialty high schools, or for the next year or two, you think they have lots of things going on there and you don't want them to be part of the FAFSA initiative. That's up to you but you'll need to give us the list of high schools that you want to have FAFSA completion data over the next several years. And what we're, that's gonna be the basis for randomly assigning who's gonna get access in 2013 versus 2014. And then we're also going to need the rosters of seniors. I think you've all been part of the uh, webinars about what you can send through the portal, what's FERPA protected. It's going to be the same kind of information. The senior rosters are going to be name, date of birth. Do you know what else is on there? Zip code. Thank you. Okay. We're going to need that because that's going to be the basis for matching against all these records to get the outcome information. We're gonna do the random assignment of schools and we're gonna provide you back the list of who starts in 2013 versus later. And then again, you don't wanna start the FAFSA completion activities for the control group, the later start schools, until at least summer of 2013. Now, a lot of people have asked in the webinars, well, what do you mean by the FAFSA completion activities? If you have lots of things going on related to college access, don't stop doing them in the control schools. You can do them, but you cannot, as the district folks, you cannot send names from the control schools through the portal, okay, until 2014, or at least the summer of 2013. And you don't want to be training your counselors in those control schools to do this individual follow-up and outreach because you're not going to have access to the individual student data in the control schools. Okay? So what is the timeline for all of this? I can hear the murmuring going on through the, uh, through the room. So very shortly, we are going to be making the request of the schools. So you're going to be asked to identify all the schools whose seniors you want FAFSA information for. After we get that list, 
and the rosters, we will randomly assign them and we'll give you back the list of schools because that's obviously where you want to be targeting the training of counselors, the development of teams, all of those kinds of activities this first year in those schools that are selected to begin right away. Okay, so then January through May, you're gonna be downloading and uploading individual student data for those schools that are starting right away. And then behind the scenes, I'm going to be matching data for the two sets of schools uh, in March and then in September. And then in December of 2013, I hope to be able to have the impact estimates for the initiative as a whole and to begin rolling them back out to you all. All right, I'm gonna stop. I see there are some questions. We were gonna open it up, but I'll take a clarifying question now, and then we'll open it up so everyone can ask everyone. Excuse me if I'm too forthright, but I, I don't know if anybody else has this issue, but uh, generally experimental research is frowned upon in education because ultimately in any experiment, when you have a control group, you're, you're selectively denying services to a group of, of individuals over providing it to others. And now, I'm, my concern isn't on data because obviously withholding of data is one thing, but is it really true that we, we need to withhold FAFSA completion activities at, a at, at selected schools and hold them at others? I, I don't know, but I have a problem with that. As I said, if you have college access activities going on in the control schools, you should go ahead and do it. Primarily, what I'm talking about is downloading the individual student data because really for the department, that's the big thing that we're doing differently and that's mostly what we would like to measure. In our district, I mean, all of our schools hold a, a FAFSA night where college rep comes, you go but it's pretty basic. So. We have three high schools, so I, I forget. I remember this from the. I, I, re, I recall it being discussed in the um, webinar, but I don't remember when you have three high schools whether how that's going to be divided because obviously it's not going to be a 50% split for the controller treatment. But my question would be for the activities, as we, we know that we realize that we do very little with FAFSA activities. We have that financial aid night, the FAFSA person's there, and that's kind of it. But we were hoping to maybe, as I look through the packet and the flyers and do a little more PR with it, it, would that be not acceptable because I would be doing more than what we currently do for the, for the um, control school? I, you know, I think that particularly the PR, the collaborative work you do with partners, anything you do district-wide, you should do that. Okay. You should do that. Even if it's more than what we currently do. Right, because we're not trying to prevent you from really going forward with the initiative district-wide. But we do want to do the staggered rollout because we think it's going to allow us to do a good study. And frankly, we think that it will be helpful for you all to devote your attention to not every district, but a smaller set. I mean, excuse me, not every high school, but a smaller set. OK, because the, the big piece is not is because of not having the download piece for the treatment school, you're not going to have the information on the errors that were made and, and all of those pieces that you're going to work one-on-one -on -one with kids. And that's really is going to be the bigger difference between that's the That's really what we're going to be measuring and testing. Okay. That's Thank right. you. Yep. I have a question for Kelly and I think for Greg. You talked about pushing this information out to our community partners who are doing college access. And my legal department will tell me that FERPA regs don't allow us to do that. Has there been any movement on that? Greg, I know you were looking into it when we met last month. Ed has just said that there will be a presentation on that tomorrow. Yeah. Does that sound right? Is Dan here? Dan Clock? Is that what you're covering, Dan? Yeah. Okay, that'll be covered tomorrow morning for everybody in the room. But from the um, Chicago perspective, and we can talk afterwards as well, um, my point wasn't necessarily about giving your, your external partners the data, but there are lots of ways that you can engage them in helping to support the rollout and reaching students through things that you organize because you know information that they don't. Yes, thank you. I have a couple of questions related to the directory information for the seniors, that file. Um, how often will we be able to refresh that file? I'm sure we're not unique in the fact that every day we have students moving in and out. I believe that in response to questions that it came in through the last webinar, we um, are all in agreement that you should be able to update your list of seniors. I think what we're going to try to do is talk about that at the end of Charlie's session tomorrow in the data session. But I mean, essentially, 
you're going to be able to update it when you want to. And there's just going to be, and this has less to do with the evaluation and more to do with just how you send things through the portal. But essentially, you're going to be able to do it when you want to do it. You'll just need to do it in a particular way so that we can track it through the portal. That's all. Okay, great. And that would be the, the second question on that file is, we're talking all seniors. Um, I think the, and, and I, the lady from Boston was helpful in, as we talked about these different tools because I've heard some questions about um, we're not screening out anybody over 18 or anything like that. Uh, I, think some, I think there's some confusion between the tool about the FAFSA completion that was shown earlier and then what we're actually doing for the uh, file upload. So this is just all seniors. Is that right. correct? And Dina, am I right that there's going to be a webinar a little bit later this month to talk more about nitty gritty details about how to send things through the portal, what kinds of seniors? You're correct. We're also talking about two different processes. The rosters that Marsh is talking about are for the purpose of the national evaluation. Okay, so once those rosters have left the building, that, that's that. That will satisfy what Marsh needs for the national evaluation. But come January, you can either use those same rosters or come up with some other rosters to start querying the system for however often you want to check on the, the, um, the status of those seniors. So it's two different processes. So, so you'll provide your first set of rosters in December, but moving forward, what you send through the portal can be your cleaned file. So if you normally every quarter go through and check enrollment and drop students who are no longer enrolled or you take on transfers, then you'll be able to update those files. Do we include the names of students uh, in our rosters, whether it's the, just the senior list or the um, the uh, lists where we'll be checking for FAFSA completion of those students that we know do not have social security numbers and will not be eligible anyway to apply for federal aid? It's not so much a That's a good question. Thank you. <laughs> I'm, I'm um, at least I got credit for it being yeah, a good yeah, question. Yeah. So. Um, those, those would be counted in your total of your graduating seniors, so but I would, would... Would that not automatically bring down our percentage if we well, know Well, it does, apply? and that's the reason that I'm hesitating. <laughs> yeah. Um, Hmm. Let us talk about that one. Okay. We'll get back to you. All right. Well, let me just say that you're going to have all the individual data for the individual students. And so you can always take those students out when you get back the file through the portal. Mm -hmm. So my recommendation is you send them through and then you take them out of your numerator and your denominator. 